Hey cats and kittens, it's Ed Budd here. Racing is on the horizon, but I'm still unsure about which shoes to wear to the ball. Tapering this week, albeit a very short few days worth, turning down the intensity, but I still don't know which shoe to pick. For that big race this Sunday, I'm going to dive into some data and some stats and try and figure out which shoes help me run at my best. Thanks for tuning in guys, it's always appreciated. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we roll out those new videos for you. Beast would be most happy. Also, hit that thumbs up like button. It really does help the channel out a great deal. Danke schön. So let's dive into some data here and see what we can find out. So I went through first, past longer runs, sort of 10 miles or more, and any race pace efforts that I've done over the last 12 months and some very interesting things came to light. Firstly, I run a whole lot better in cooler temperatures. It's very, very clear. The half marathon time trial that I did back in February of this year, apparently it was only two degrees centigrade, so that's 35.6 Fahrenheit. It felt like it as well. My hands were like ice blocks after a couple of miles, but I seem more able to keep my heart rate at a much lower and consistent level at that temperature. In warmer conditions, like at the Martok 10K back in July of this year, it was already about 15 degrees C at 9 a.m., so that's about 59 Fahrenheit. Heart rate got up to about 160 BPM average over that one. You'd expect a more higher intensity effort, but yeah, nowhere near actually the heart rate of the half marathon time trial, but it was 13 degrees higher in terms of temperature at Martok. No surprises there, but we do see some similar results across some training runs as well in higher temperatures. If I'm comparing 10K efforts, so they're very close actually, the 10K time trial I did for the World Ekaden event back in November of last year, and the Martok 10K this year, I think it was about 10 degrees C for the Ekaden event, which is 50 Fahrenheit, had a much lower perceived average effort level on that one, a heart rate of only 152 beats per minute average. So that's quite considerable actually, 160 on one and 152 on the other. Similar shoes there, both in the time trial over 10K and also the half marathon time trial, I use the same shoe the Adi Zero Adios Pro. Hold on to that thought. Looking through the training runs, the Rocket X actually appeared quite high in terms of pace and not that high in terms of perceived effort. I had a heart rate close to that found on the half marathon time trial, over about 10 miles, but again, this is in much cooler temperatures. I can remember doing a load of runs actually around the local trading estate where it was petrifyingly cold in the Rocket X and that seemed to really work very well actually in cold temperatures. One training run that really did stick out for me though, over the 10 mile mark, was in the Alpha Fly. Average pace there of six minutes, 59 seconds per mile. One hour, 10 minutes in length, and with an average heart rate of only 148 beats per minute. Now this run sticks out a little bit because even in a t-shirt and with the club vest on top, some sort of bandana thing on my head and longer shorts, I still managed to churn out an effort. Good pace, close to half marathon target pace, very consistent as well over the miles. This is not a shoe that I've considered in the slightest for doing the half marathon race, but has the answer been staring me in the face all along? Should I give it a chance? I've got to be honest, I haven't run in the Alpha Fly for ages, for months, but am I missing out? I'd always put it in that sort of overkill category really for the half marathon, it being a little bit heavier than the next percent too, and practically all the other shoes as well. All that cushion and AirPods and stuff that it really needed for a half marathon, but maybe the answer's staring me in the face. So Adios Pro and the Alpha Fly, two things I hadn't really considered using. I just sort of pushed them to the side and other new shiny things were in front of me. Great performances and lower perceived effort. I've got to include those, I have to give them a chance. Looking through my training runs and certainly recently for recovery, there's one shoe that I've really beaten down on a little bit. I didn't think it was that great. Aside from a little damage, I've actually really been enjoying using this as like a walking shoe and a recovery shoe. Yeah, it's a very expensive recovery shoe, I'll grant you that. And looking at my training runs in this shoe, I think it firmly needs to stay in that kind of category. I did do one steady effort in this one, about seven minutes 40 per mile, and heart rate was pretty much the same 
as I would get in the next percent too when I was hitting about 7 minutes 22 seconds per mile. I think that says a lot about this shoe. There's a lot of weight to it. There's a lot of heft to it. I think it just expends more effort to get it up to those paces than you do in any other shoe. There was a 12 mile effort I did in the next percent too. A little less elevation on that run, but it does prove that this shoe does dramatically lower the perceived effort. It can't be denied at all. The stats are there. It's so clear, it's transparent. I think it's hard to take away any major observations for only a 5K effort in this shoe. A quick 3.1 mile blast. Well, I did have an effort in the next percent too of 1936, and I have to say it was that little bit easier in this shoe. Average pace there of six minutes, 19 seconds per mile, and temperatures around about 14 degrees C. Shows it does do the job for me at well below half marathon target pace there. You know, a 5K is an all out effort you want to give it your best. That half marathon demands far more discipline to stay at a slightly lower speed, but for a much longer period. I think sometimes the next percent isn't really the best when it comes to that type of effort. It does make you want to put your foot down and just accelerate and it can go a bit out of control. You've got to be quite disciplined towards the start of any longer run in this one. So we've got three shoes there, the Next Percent 2, the Alpha Fly, and the Adios Pro Original, which is buried somewhere. It's somewhere around here. I don't think I've even got 60 miles into the Adi Zero Adios Pro yet. I think the Pro 2 is fast approaching that one. I know that I can hit around about 1 hour 30 in the Adi Zero Adios Pro. That's with a lot of elevation as well. I know that I can do that. I've got a fresh pair of Alpha Fly Next Percent sat in a box ready to be used. I was waiting to use it as a marathon shoe. Zero miles and minty fresh. I think it'd be a bit of a gamble to wear the Alpha Fly for the half marathon. I haven't worn it in some time. I think it'd be a bit of a stupid idea. I have done some stupid things in my time, but I think that would be a step too far. I think running a race in a model that you haven't worn in some time would be a poor decision. I don't want to be like the characters at the end of Indiana Jones, you know. He chose poorly. Would the lighter Adi Zero Adios Pro 2 be a better idea? Perhaps a bit of a gamble, I suppose. It didn't fare as well as I thought it would do on the 10K, but at half marathon, maybe? I don't think I've really got enough data yet on the Puma to make any real decision based on info and stats. That's a lovely shoe, super lightweight. I haven't gone much over 10 miles in that model yet. I'm pretty sure I could without any problems, but you just don't know. That would be going against a lot of things that I have built into me, like measures that just don't allow me to do that. I mean, I did incorporate six miles at half marathon target pace in a 10 mile run the other day and it felt good. So maybe, you know, maybe one very easy effort in the Alpha Fly to see how it feels. It's just not worth it. With a few strides, maybe. But I didn't choose to do that today, guys. I chose to use the Alios Pro 2, threw in some strides and it felt really good. Or is that just the legs feeling refreshed and ready to rock? Probably the latter. I gotta be honest, guys, I'm still really unsure of which shoe to go for the body the mind all that stuff's kind of ready but i'm not sure what to put on my feet i don't really know which works the absolute best for me i think when you get to the top level shoes like that there's very subtle differences there that need to be considered i think if you're a runner with a more neutral foot strike you've got a embarrassment of riches just so many different choices that i could go for just can't quite decide. I mean, the cushion of all of these high-end race models is always fantastic, exemplary. I mean, the key difference is there in the upper and the outsole. I mean, if I'm going on upper and outsole, I'd probably choose the Adios Pro 2. That was like a tire today. It really felt good and propulsive and grippy. I mean, I'm starting to look at weather as well. What is it going to be like on Sunday? Are we in for a dry day? I know there's going to be a lot of rain tomorrow, which is Friday. I am running a poll in the community section of the channel, guys. Please go and head over there and cast your vote. Rich shoe, based on my running exploits, do you feel will get the best from me? Is using the next percent too a bit of a cop out? Just a boring choice? Everyone's done that, haven't they? Or is it the sensible choice, knowing that it just really does the trick and works? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Key thing is, I'm feeling good, apart from some hay fever, but that'll be okay. It'll go away. A quick musical interlude for you. I've been updating my half marathon playlist ready for Sunday, introducing a few new tracks, switching out a few older ones. One that I have left in there is a track called The License, The Break Mix, 
by Chrome and Time. This is great, loads of pitched up and down aim and beats, really hard hitting bass. It's gonna sound nice on those new earphones of mine. Watch for a review of those soon. I have left Hard Noise on there as well by Dillinger. Those steppy beats really helped out last time on my half marathon time trial. And I don't see them doing anything different this time. It's not all newer stuff though. I've got the Slammer on there by Chrome and Time. I can remember actually buying that in a record store way back in the 90s. It had a blue cover with a strange robot on there playing some sort of sports type game with a sort of graffiti, the slammer, written on it. I can't even remember what I had for lunch yesterday, but I can remember that from the early 90s. It's not all crazy stuff on there though. I've got Suspended Space by LTJ Bookham. Just something a little bit more mellow. Perhaps when I've got into a groove on the half marathon, I can just kind of sit in that little pocket and let the more mellow, chilled out beats satisfy the mind. I will post the whole playlist very soon so you guys can check it out and experience some of those wonderful tracks. I've got a bit of ACDC in there if required though, just to give me a little boost. Thanks for sticking with me to the end of today's video guys, much appreciated. If you haven't done so already, help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button, but also clicking the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos for you. You can also help give the channel a bit of a boost by giving this video a thumbs up like and also sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.